chills run down your spine. You break into a cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on Earth, a Nevada ghost town with a haunted hotel. The gold field is supposed to be one of seven portals in the world that lead from one dimension to the next. Is it too late to chicken up? There's no really freaking. Oh my god! There's something in that room. The mummies of Mexico. I have a friend who said he would not spend the night in there for a million dollars. That freaked me out. I'm thinking about being alone there with a bunch of dead people, mummies. Guys! I'm scared! Ireland's infamous Hellfire Club. Everybody ends their story with, well, I'd never go up there after dark. Oh. Oh my god, there's something in our room. I'm not going back downstairs. What is that? A possessed resort for sale. I think they should burn Hot Lake to the ground and cover its ashes with salt. It's a very difficult property to sell. We think it has real good possibilities for a bed and breakfast. The normal does not apply anymore. Just gotta hang in there. What is it that makes a place scary? Is it the empty hallways of a crumbling ruin? A legend of the dead reaching out from the grave? Or a powerful presence that overwhelms the emotions? In Goldfield, Nevada, a decaying desert ghost town, there's little question of the most frightening locale, the Goldfield Hotel. Once a palatial residence for prosperous land developers, the hotel is now a decrepit ruin, rumored to be haunted by spirits of past guests. Paranormal experts have long been eager to explore the Goldfield Hotel. But once inside, are they prepared for what they might find? Some people truly are terrified. If you believe they can hurt you, they will. Some pretty reliable people have observed things that were just out of the ordinary with no explanation. You'd have to live here to understand how the people feel. I'm not one to say there's not something in there. If there is, I'm gonna be where it ain't. I guarantee you that. Goldfield, Nevada, a ghost town that lives up to its name. Goldfield was founded in 1902 by two prospectors. They found gold on the north side of Columbia Mountain, and uh, stampede proceeded pretty quick afterward. Over seven million ounces came out of this small district, and uh, everybody was here to make money, and a lot of them did. The money was flowing. And now this, uh, the gold is gone, and the, the town is just sagging. Other than gold, the greatest attraction in Goldfield was the Goldfield Hotel. The Goldfield Hotel, uh, in its day, would compare to, like, the Venetian Hotel, one of the greatest hotel and casinos in the world. When it opened, it was a week's worth of Hoopla. French champagne, uh, squab. All that's left of the once grand Goldfield Hotel is a ruin, and some say the spirits of the dead. I used to give tours, and we were going through one of the downstairs rooms at the end of the hall, and I'm standing over by the wall, and suddenly something that wasn't there. I can feel the hands. Picks me up from under the arms, lifts me, and slams me against the wall. About this high. 
I was lifted, oh, probably a couple of feet up off of the floor. Wouldn't be telling this if I didn't have two witnesses. Really hurting from the knees down. I had a bruise on the back of my leg larger than a quarter and the identical bruise on the bottom of my foot. It was scary looking. It was almost like a lightning strike had gone through the back of my leg out my foot. I had gone into the hotel with uh, my husband and uh, several friends. We'd gone down into the basement. It was such a cold, cold feeling. It's like walking into a refrigerator. And I couldn't breathe. And I turned around and told my husband, I said, I've got to get out of here. I can't breathe. It freaked me out so bad that I didn't really want to ever go back in that place. What brought me to Goldfield was the restoration of the Goldfield Hotel. It was about 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night, and I heard uh, music like a rinky-tink piano playing. And I looked up and down through that hallway into that bar, and that bar was lit up as bright as any anything you'd want, and there were no lights in there. And there were people there in early 1900s clothes having the greatest time you ever wanted to see. They were dancing and laughing and drinking. I wanted to go down and join them, but I looked back down at my plans, looked back up, and it was gone. I knew that the place was haunted, and I saw it. I'm not one to say there's not something in there. Of course, I'm not going to say there is either. But if there is, I'm going to be where it ain't. I guarantee you that. The hotel hides a shameful secret from the past in room 109. Room 109 is the ghost room in the whole place. There is a young woman pregnant with long blonde hair that's chained to a radiator in that little room. And incidentally, that room has a window, but it's the darkest and the coldest room in the entire hotel. According to the legends, someone locked her in and kept her until she had the baby. And they say the baby was thrown at the bottom of the stairs. Ghost Town aficionados consider Goldfield a premier destination. We've been ghost town for about seven years now. I've been trying to get into the Goldfield Hotel for, for years, ever since I first saw it from the outside. There's got to be spirits in there, because with as many people that passed through the doors and, and stayed there, and with all the history in these places, um, there's definitely spirits in there. This is probably one of the most sought-after places for a ghost hunter to get to, the Goldfield Hotel. The Goldfield is supposed to be one of seven portals in the world that lead from one dimension to the next, and spirits are free to come and go at will. I think the high level, too, of energy that accompanies gold rushes and that type of thing not only draws people here for their fortunes and lust and greed, but it also keeps them here after death because they're afraid to give those things up. It's gonna be fun, girl. It's gonna be fun. Her name is Ripley, and she's been going with me forever. She loves going to the ghost towns. Yeah, every once in a while, I think she definitely knows there's something going on. She can feel something that I'm not, you know, aware of. A noted medium has agreed to lead a paranormal investigation at the hotel. I guess it's true that I took to the dead. I will be using all of my senses and opening up to my spirit guides and angels and they will guide me to where I need to be to find the portals that will give us the opening to these entities. According to some in Goldfield, these ghost hunters are looking for trouble. The police don't like you messing around with the place here. And they patrol the town pretty well. There, there just aren't any, any shenanigans going on here. There's been people call the sheriff's office and say that they saw lights in there. Well, I tell you, <clears throat> if I would have had to go in there, and that sucker wasn't a ghost when I went in, he would have been when I come out. I can guarantee you that. All right, Faye, we're here. Oh, <laughs> killer. <laughs> I want to see something. Oh, I'm sure uh, we will. I know, that's what's... <laughs> 
try them out. Tonight's going to be an exciting adventure, but also can be very nerve-wracking. I know a lot of people think, oh, it's great to walk through a graveyard at nighttime, but it really isn't a good idea to go doing things like that unless you know what you're doing. The investigators are joined by several curious locals. I'm anxious to get inside and see what we can get in here because I was starting to kind of feel something, even just looking from the outside. Yeah. I get oh, nauseous every time I go by this place. It's very scary. Very scary. I'm scared. I'm, scared. I'm hoping she's not going to pick up on any of that. I hope whatever she feels is her own deal. But I just, oh yeah, last thing you'll see is tail. <laughs> She'll be out of here. Okay, Ripley's looking pretty nervous now, but come on, let's go see what we can find. Mm -hmm. Is it too late to chicken now? Yep. Let's go on in. Come on through. Okay. Ooh, definitely some buzzes, some feelings. I'm getting the feeling that I need to go up to the first floor, so um, I'll go check out the vibrations up there first, and then you can come on up and follow if you like. Yeah, I think what we're going to go ahead and do then is we're going to go ahead and take off on this first floor. I think we'll head back over in here where it seems pretty dark. Cat, Mike, and Ripley team up with the psychic to see if they can locate the portal. <sighs> hmm. Oh boy, that's a cold feeling there. Feel here. Oh, definite difference in temperature. Yeah. I'm picking up something, but I'm trying to find the the entity that's connected to it. Well, Just look, look at her tail. She so does oh, not. Yeah. She's, she's shaking. She's, shaking. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. she's quivering. Come on. Rip. She's really freaking. It's okay. Poor dog. <laughs> Shaking. Oh, baby. <laughs> She's feeling something. I feel as if somebody might have had a suicidal situation out of this window. Male. Elderly. I get the feeling that he's not gone through the light either, so he's probably still walking around. It's like he walked in here and made up his mind that that's what he was going to do. And then just went straight for the window. There's a female energy here, too. Very sad. Very, very sad. She says she's dead. She knows she's dead. Strong but erratic activity is registering on the other group's electromagnetic meters. Six. Did you just see that? Six and three. Two. It's right, right here in this, you feel this one. Yeah. Whatever it is seems to be hovering around right. right there. Yes. They attempt to contact Elizabeth, a legendary spirit of the hotel. Oh my God! Come down here quick. Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm not feeling anything. I heard something. I said, Elizabeth, are you here? And I heard whoosh, coming from this room. Elizabeth. She says, I'll sit now. Okay. Is she shaking? Oh, yeah. She's shaking. Yeah. Yeah, she's... she's kind of feeling like she needs to get out of the kind of crowded energy. And I don't mean our energy, I mean the energy that's in and around the piano. Are you all right? It like sucked me into the corner. It just... I was here watching her meter. And it just, it just overwhelmed me. It just took me from top to bottom. It just. What did you say? She screamed because <laughs> I heard her down the hall. So I ran down the hall. <laughs> that was the seven. That was the seven reading over there. And all of a sudden, it just, it just took me. And I'm like, take a picture, and nobody would take the camera. So I just snapped myself. I'm like, and I'm just so drained. I'm so drained. It wouldn't let me seven. take a picture. Yeah. I tried. This it just stopped working. When she started feeling that. When she started feeling, feeling that. Yes, she said it. Quick, take a picture and mine wouldn't work. It's really weird, but everything seems to be centering basically in the same area. Just before midnight, a strange presence is felt in room 109. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can feel it. That is scary. I'm shaking and I'm crying. No. 
pull yourself out of the room. It's a three. It's a three. Okay. Four. Come on. Oh my god. There's something in that room. Michelle, it's here. Oh my god. Oh, it's here. I feel it. My camera did more. Can you feel it? I can feel it. Okay. It's two, nine, seven. It's very strong. Three. She's right. Do you feel it too? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah I can. Right here. Oh my god, that was awful. That was so bad. Seven. It was like something attacked me almost. It was horrible. It was like that thing you must have felt up there. It was like energy just rained right off of you. Yeah, it just it was pulled. horrible. And it was like, not it wasn't it feels good. So weak and it's like ah. and and it like drained me and made me want to cry. I couldn't control it. I was okay. like, let's get out Obviously, with our psychic and, and uh, with the way that the girls were feeling and the equipment acting the way that it did, that I feel pretty satisfied that we got something. What I felt when I went in um, was really, really sadness. Like, like you just wanted to, to gulp tears out for somebody's soul because it, and she went through something chronic in there, that's for sure, and she died in there. She's never been like that Ever before. been like that before. No. I mean, that was like that. borderline just embarrassing. I can't even believe she was acting that. I mean, but then again, she's gone through something. That... Sure. Well, she was obviously feeling something that yeah. we weren't. I mean, some she... kind of vibrations coming from the ground. That, I yeah. Mean, she she didn't want to be in the ground. She didn't want to be in here. We're touching the ground. We got shoes on. Mm -hmm. We don't feel it like she does. Yeah. Yeah, she did not like it here. Oh, poor thing. She just wants to go and hide, get out of here. In the remote mountain city of Guanajuato, Mexico, cemetery space is at such a premium that grave sites are rented, not bought. If the family of the deceased doesn't keep up payments, the corpse is then evicted. But even more bizarre, unique soil conditions leave some of the bodies mummified. These ghastly remains are then put on public display, a desecration of the dead that has resulted in numerous reports of frightening spirit activity. The mummies of Mexico do not rest in peace, and neither will those who dare to visit them. Guanajuato, a colonial Spanish city in the heart of Mexico. Nowhere in Mexico are people closer to death than in Guanajuato. Because of local law, people pay a concession of $10 a year to remain buried in Guanajuato. The government gives five years to the families of the deceased to pay the fee. If after the grace period the charge is in pay, the loved one is removed from the tomb. When my father died, we opened the family crypt. Inside, my deceased uncle was now a mummy. Due to unique climate conditions, 2% of the bodies removed from their tombs are mummified. This is called the snail. You descend here into the crypt where the mummies have been kept for the last 150 years. We have a lady mummy that was horrifically buried alive. She had an epileptic attack, and the family thought she was dead. Unfortunately, she woke up inside her coffin. A woman and her stillborn fetus were buried together for 80 years. They were discovered holding hands, then separated for display. The baby is considered the smallest mummy in the world, a fetus of six months. Locals believe the spirits of the mummies haunt the crypt. Some of the mummies are probably resentful that their bodies are being displayed without their permission. 
There are lots of spirits who haunt the place after midnight. I would never go where the mummies are. A group of Americans studying in Guanajuato have become fascinated by Mexico's obsession with death. They care about the afterlife. They care about where they're going and what's going to happen to them after they die. You know, the other day I saw a funeral come out, came procession, and everybody was smiling and laughing. I think it's kind of special how they view death. It's sort of like an acceptance that the dead still walk among us, and it, it still respects the dead, even though they're, they're dead. <laughs> but in America, once you're deceased, that's it. The students have been given special permission to visit the mummy's crypt at night. I don't know what I'm going to run into, and if I, if I run out here screaming like a girl, I mean, that wouldn't surprise you at all. I have a friend who said he would not spend the night in there. He would not go in there after hours for a million dollars. He grew up here. That freaked me out. I'm thinking about tonight being alone there in the room with a bunch of dead people, mummies. Um, I don't doubt that I'll definitely experience something. I don't like looking at babies. Yeah, it's kind of disturbing. Let's go back here. You want to go first? Or... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, dark room. Not mine. Dark. Real dark. Several students attempt to make contact with the spirits of the mummies. Students believe they sense a presence in the crypt. What, what is it? What was that? Wait, wait, that's what? 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 I don't know. It was sweet. I don't know. It was sweet. See, see, it was just like the corner over there with the, the light. No, no like, y'all were turned over here. And then I looked over there with you. Over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 There's either rats in this place or something going on in here. Guys! I'm scared. Guys, what the hell? Oh my god! I don't want to get out of here. 
the students could no longer remain in the crib. It was like nature was telling us not to come down here. It was like trying to stop us. And you come down here and it's just unbelievably eerie. And I heard noises. I don't know what they were, what they were attributed to, but they were definitely scary. I did feel uh, a lot of energy, a lot of unusual energy. In the United States, death is something we anesthetize, we sterilize, we put it out of sight. Here in Mexico, it's part of life. On a windswept hilltop outside of Dublin, Ireland, stands a haunting ruin known as the Hellfire Club. 18th century noblemen used the infamous stone hunting lodge as a secret retreat where they would practice the occult arts and perform demonic ceremonies. Locals believe that the evil born in the Hellfire Club was so powerful that it still lingers there today. The Hellfire Club. The hills above Dublin, Ireland. I'm one of the people around here as well, like everyone else that wouldn't go near the Hellfire Club at night. If at midnight you walk around the Hellfire Club three times, the devil appears to you. It started here where she felt what she said was a presence. Locals who've seen it believed it to be the devil. The Hellfire Club was originally built in 1725. The principal founder of the Hellfire Club was Richard Parsons, the first Earl of Ross. He was a dabbler in sorcery and the occult generally. Hellfire meant practicing hedonism, non-stop drinking, gambling, regular and perverted sexuality. These men were fabulously wealthy and the secrecy of the club enabled them to perform their darkest wishes. These excesses led them to satanic initiation rites. Animals were certainly sacrificed. There is evidence that human sacrifice took place as well. Two American tourists are exploring Ireland's haunted sites. We go to NYU, but we're studying for a year abroad here in Ireland. It's so gorgeous here and full of history. The girls arrive at the old ruin. In 1740, a fire brought the Hellfire Club to an end. The burnt out structure remained. Farmers attempted to use it as a barn, but the cattle refused to enter it. At a nearby inn, the girls learn about the building's dark past. The Dublin Hellfire Club were a bunch of gentlemen of the ruling Protestant class in Ireland at that time. One night, a wandering cleric was up around the woods and a storm fell. So he went up to the only building he could see around. He went in to get shelter and he found to his horror that he had stumbled across one of the meetings of the Dublin Hellfire Club. The priest uttered an exorcism. A spirit or imp or something went up the chimney. The chandelier fell and the place went on flames. Is it possible that somebody like made up these stories to keep certain people away from this area. People I know um, that live around the area now, they have absolutely no reason um, to make something like that up. There was the skeleton of somebody who was very small in stature actually found up in the Hellfire Club. Along with the skeleton, they found a brass figurine with a devil snubbing its nose. Do the local people in this area like steer clear of this place at night. It is the kind of place that people travel from to go up and spend the night to see if they'll see anything. Yeah. Everybody ends their story with, well, I'd never go up there after dark. Sandra and Paul lead the girls toward the ruins of the Hellfire Club. What we're walking around here is uh, what remains of a very, very ancient burial ground. It would have consisted of a ring of large stones Ancient stones were deliberately incorporated in the building, and that was an extremely unusual thing, because ancient stones have always been regarded with a mixture of fear and respect, because they weren't really sure what they were there for. So we're on the first floor now, and this would have been the hallway, and this would have actually been the front door, the entrance that the owners of the place and their guests would have come up.
This is uh, where all the action was supposed to have taken place, the black masses, the card games and whatnot. I actually think that these people had an in-depth knowledge of the occult. Somebody knew magical techniques um, because that energy is within the stones of this place. I can feel it emanating from the floor and I can feel it coming down from what would have been above the ceiling. I think we should stay here all night. We have to stay away. Nobody's ever done it. Do you think we can do it? I don't know. I think we can. I think we can. Uh, you might go up for a few hours, but I bet that just come nightfall, you will not stay the whole night up in the help our club. I've often had people knocking on the door here. That's people that are okay, three, see ya. three, four, five o'clock in the morning, wanting them to ring taxis or their parents. 10 p.m. The girl settled down for the night. Think we'll see anything? I don't know. This place is like the creepiest place I've ever been, though. There's got to be something weird left over from doing all that stuff up here. I mean, they came up here for a reason. I mean, they didn't just come up here to have fun. They, it's like kind of secretive up here. This is kind of freaking me out, actually. I know. Just to be in a place where there were dead bodies found. Just hope the fire doesn't go out. 12.24 a.m. The girls hear sounds coming from outside the ruins. I'm starting to hear things. I know. I don't know if we're just freaking ourselves out or if it's... I think we might have to go outside. I don't know if I want to go outside. I'm not going outside alone. Let's just do it. Come on. Here. Can you see? Yeah, okay. Here are the stairs. Wait, wait. Stay close. Oh, well, my heart's starting to be a little faster. What was that? Something just went behind that stone. <laughs> what are you talking I'm about? I'm sure it's, it's, it's animals. What is that? I don't know, you want to go back around the front of the house? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, I saw something. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? I saw something right behind that wall. Oh my God. What? Do you see that? Wait, shine the light up there. All of our stuff is in there. And oh like... my God, I'm really getting scared, Bayana. What is that? Yeah, but let's just, let's try and go back to the lot, right? I'm not walking through those woods. What was that? Something just walked across there. There's something in our room. 2.03 a.m. Beata and Caroline search for the mysterious shape in their room. Stay right behind me. Hello. Okay, and then... What was that? I don't know. Oh, let's get out quickly. No, 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 no. I definitely heard something downstairs. Oh my god, I heard something. What was that? I'm not going back downstairs. I feel much better up here. Okay. Paralyzed by fear, the girls remain trapped on the landing until the sun rises. We should have believed all those people. We shouldn't have even gone there. Definitely no. wouldn't go up there again. Not that if you paid freaky. me. I mean, there was definitely something in our room. You definitely saw something run. I was scared. I definitely won't be going there. Sir. No way. Resort in northeastern Oregon was once a haven for the rich and famous who were drawn to the elegant spa for the curative powers of its thermal waters. But today, the resort is a rotting shell and better known for much darker reasons. The abandoned hotel and bathhouse was recently put up for sale. But who would buy a place like Hot Lake Resort? 
Hot Lake is an evil place. It just does things to you that you never forget. Nothing good comes out of Hot Lake, and I just think it should be destroyed. I think they should burn Hot Lake to the ground and cover its ashes with salt. Hot Lakes has been on the market for a, a lot of years, maybe even decades. It's a very difficult property to sell. The purchase price of the property is 250000 which includes three lakes, 40 acres of land. If I was to sell this property, I'd feel guilty for the rest of my life if I didn't disclose the murder, the death, the hauntings, and the people that have died there. The Hot Lake Hotel was quite a grand damn lady in its day. It began in the 1800s. The train would stop here, and people used this as a destination facility. It had a big dining room and ballroom, hot mineral baths. The therapeutic waters in the lake surrounding the hotel brought comfort to thousands of people every year. The temperature of the water of the hot lake comes out at about 186 degrees. If anyone were to fall in that lake, they would be scalded immediately. In 1920, a doctor purchased the hotel and set up an experimental medical clinic on the third floor. He was working with x-ray equipment, and he was working with radiation. There was a lot of deaths because of it. And there was more than likely deaths that was attributed to him because of his experiments, because he did go a little bit too far. Rumors that we've heard recently is that there are bodies buried in the courtyard in the back. We've also heard rumors that there's a basement out there underneath the bathhouse, and that there are dead bodies down there. It's scary, not only because of the ghost stories, but also because of whatever physically could be residing in those walls at this point. I would approach the doors on the west wing and right before I got to them, they would just open by themselves. And the minute I walked through them, they would slam shut behind me. One of the caretakers ended up eventually killing himself in a very bizarre way. He stabbed himself in the head with a screwdriver three or four times and then cut his own throat. The time I was a caretaker here was the worst time of my life. My obsession with the place just was driving me insane. I had thoughts of suicide. The best thing to do is just stay away from here because it causes a lot of misery. If I was going back in there in the night, I would take a big flashlight and a gun. But I would have a big Hurrican cross around my neck. Who would want to buy a haunted resort? When we heard Hot Lake was for sale, we were real excited because we think it has real good possibilities for a bed and breakfast. We're really looking forward to seeing inside. Hey, this is the main lobby that we're coming into. This oh, is uh, pretty much the center of the building. Some beautiful yeah. Yeah. And back here was the post office, the, the bank, and uh, the registration desk. And um, this is generally where, where people come from the train depot across the street. This place is really amazing. It's just so creepy in here. It take a lot of work to fix up. This was uh, Doctor's Operating Theater is what he called it. The operating table used to sit right here in the middle of it. He performed a lot of the surgeries in here. He specialized in hysterectomies. Um, and every woman that checked into this place, every single one of them right down the line, had a hysterectomy. Oh, wow. It feels heavy in this room. I'm going to. Let's go. Um, a nurse that worked out here back in the 20s fell into the, into the hot spring and was scalded alive. And I've heard people say maybe she was pushed. Hmm. And Did she survive? Her. No. Concerned with the hotel's dark history. The family decides to return with a psychic. The laws of the universe stop here. Um, we're going to walk into a world where the normal does not apply anymore. So you're going to need to listen, you're going to need to follow me, and you're going to need to trust me, OK? Now, I'd like to start with a prayer. 
I don't like to do any of this kind of stuff without some sort of protection. Spirit of love and light, we ask that you walk with us as we journey into this realm. Keep our hearts strong and keep us facing the light. Amen. Amen. And it's the good doctor's operating table. Oh, we give the trough as for blood. I brought my tarot cards, and I want each of you to draw one. And I want that one right there. Okay. This one's this one says turning in. There's all kinds of things. They're all around you. So just be aware of that. Just be aware of that. I can feel them. The mind card is saying they're gonna try to mess with your mind. Okay, so so be aware of that. Okay, so they're just gonna hang in there. And mine is the sorrow card. Um, they're gonna be sending their emotions through me. That's a little out there. The doctor's making his presence known. The doctor is in. Maybe he doesn't want us to look at your cards. <laughs> The group moves into the operating theater. that with the historical significance that this would make a good destination resort. After being in here tonight, I, I couldn't do that here. I couldn't do that Never. here. Never. Uh -uh. Let's, yeah. Let's go home. Let's go home. The family that was here last night, they experienced things they didn't think were possible. From skeptic to believer, they walked out believer. I don't think they'll be back. So what is it that makes a place scary? Is it the belief that a terrifying force is reaching out to you from beyond the grave? Is it the feeling of a lingering torment? Or is it the sense that the evil that once dwelt there will never depart? For some, it's not what can be seen, but what cannot. The unknown. I'm Linda Blair. I bet Ross Kemp will be pretty scared tomorrow at nine. He's surviving alone in the wilds of Alaska just for a challenge. More scary places next tonight. Why don't you just check that the front door's locked?